Heidi Ho, and we're back and ready to go. Let's have a discussion on chapter two. First of all, what's our goal? Our goal with this pencast is to make the transition from using the worksheet that we learned in chapter one to the actual accounting process using real accounting journals and ledgers. The worksheet that we learned in chapter one had some important concepts that we bring forward into chapter two. First of all, we learned the balance sheet equation, the assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Going to make a shortcut writing owner's equity now, O slash she. So one of the takeaways from chapter one was the balance sheet equation or the accounting equation. And we learned how to process transactions through that in such a way it always remained in balance. There were four possibilities. The first one is that assets could go up while liabilities and owner's equity, the other side, could go up. The second possibility was that assets could go down and something on this side, liabilities or owner's equity, could go down. The third possibility from all the transactions that we looked at is that one asset could go up and another could go down and you would still be in balance because all of the changes happened on one side. And the fourth possibility that we learned from chapter one is the liability and owner's equity. One of these things on this side could go up while something else on this side could go down. And if one side, one account goes up and one account goes down, this side remains unchanged. So those were the two big takeaways from chapter one. Number one, the balance sheet equation. And number two, the effects of transactions on the balance sheet equation. But the worksheets and will be for an accounting document. How would it look if you had thousands of assets, thousands of liabilities, lots of revenue, more expenses than anything? It just would be too big. And if you had thousands of transactions, it would be too long. It would be too hard to make accounting records from it. So in chapter two, our goal is to make the transition from that worksheet to the actual accounting process. And in order to do that, the time has come for us to learn our first big takeaway from chapter one, or from chapter two, pardon me, and that is the concept of debits and credits. You knew it was coming and you've heard of it. So here we are learning debits equal credits. If you want to come back to this part of the pencast, just click on this star. So, we always need to leave the balance sheet equation in balance. That's never going to go away. Assets are always going to need to equal liabilities plus owner's equity. But in chapter two, we're going to learn how to accomplish that using debit and credits. And if you learn to use debits and credits right, then if you record things in such a fashion that your debits always equal your credits, then your balance sheet equation will always stay in balance. So, let me re-say that. We're going to learn to record things with debits and credits. And when we learn to do that, our balance sheet equation will naturally stay in balance. If that's going to happen, then we have to decide one side is being the debit side and one side is being the credit side as far as increases go. So, Luca Pacioli, the father of accounting, invented this process about 500 years ago. And he said, all right, we're going to say assets are going to be increased with debits. 
and liabilities and owner's equity totals are going to be increased with credits. And there's our first possibility. Both sides are getting bigger. Debits increasing assets and credits increasing liabilities. Our second possibility, if you're going to use debits equals credits, is you need to make both sides smaller. Well, if debits make assets bigger, then credits are going to need to make them smaller. So if you credit an asset, that will make it smaller. And if you debit a liability or the total owner's equity account, that will make this side of the accounting equation smaller. So that's our second possibility, and it agrees with the above. Our third possibility was that you might increase an asset by, I'm going to go to some initials here because I'm going to run out of room, DR means debit. If you debit an asset and then you credit another asset, you will have made the assets bigger and smaller and debits will equal credits still, but there'll be no change in total assets, just like our third possibility above. And finally, the last possibility is the fourth possibility. If you debit a liability, that will make it smaller. And if you credit a liability, using those initials again, that will make it bigger. And if you debit and credit the right-hand side of the equation, there'll be no change in the total. And so assets will still equal liabilities. So, in just four possibilities, if you use debiting and crediting, the balance sheet equation will always stay in balance. You can make it bigger on each side, you can make it smaller on each side, you can have the changes take place, one account bigger and one account smaller on either side, and it will still remain in balance. That's all well enough and good, but it has to get just a little more complicated. Not in that the rules change because they don't, but in that we have to learn the four different kinds of accounts and owner's equity. So we still have assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, which I am abbreviating, but there are four different kinds of transactions that can happen in owner's equity. The nature of two is to increase owner's equity, and the nature of two is to decrease owner's equity. Recall from our expanded balance sheet equation. Investments, which are made in the capital account, increase owner's equity, and revenues increase owner's equity. Draws decrease owner's equity, and expenses decrease owner's equity. So, the convention stays the same. Debits increase assets, or this side of the equation, and credits increase liabilities and owner's equity, or the right-hand side of the equation. So, investments must have a credit balance because they increase owner's equity. And revenues must have a credit balance be credited to increase them because they increase owner's equity and credits increase the right-hand side. Both draws and expenses decrease owner's equity, so those accounts need to have debit balances. And they have debit balances because they both decrease owner's equity, and to decrease the right-hand side of our equation, you need a debit, because credits increase this side, so debits will decrease this side. Let's get both of these possibilities here. Oh, we need to write the right word here. So debits increase assets, and credits increase liabilities and owner's equity, and credits decrease assets, and debits decrease 
liabilities and on his equity. And we have to keep debits and credits in balance so that the balance sheet equation stays in balance. Because the capital account investments increase it, it is credited because revenues increase the owner's equity account, they are credited because draws decrease owner's equity, they have debit balances. And because expenses decrease owner's equity, they have debit balances. Because to debit owner's equity is to decrease it. If you want to increase your expenses, you debit them and thereby in decrease make smaller owner's equity. I'm going to give you two ways to help you remember what kinds of accounts are increased or decreased with debits and credits to help you practice journalizing. And the first way I'm going to give you is a picture that I made up and I put the balance sheet equation on top of a T account and a T account, which we'll talk about later, has debits on the left and credits on the right. You'll get very good at knowing that. And from that, you can kind of see how to do accounting. Debits increase assets and credits increase liabilities and owner's equity. If debits increase assets, then you know credits decrease it. If credits increase liabilities and owner's equity, then you know debits decrease it. And then there's still the four things that need to happen in owner's equity. Investments, revenues, draws, and expenses. Investments increase it so they have a credit balance. Revenues increase it so they have a credit balance. Draws decrease it so they have a debit balance because to decrease that right hand side you must debit it. And expenses have a debit balance because to decrease that right hand side you must have a debit. So left hand side, right hand side, debits, credits. It's one way to remember what accounts are increased with debits and what accounts are increased with debits. There's here. So that's one memory clue for you. I like that because it uses the balance sheet equation and normal conventions. But there is another way that you can remember. It's more of a memory kind of way and it's using acronyms. Assets, withdraws, and expenses. I think we need to write those out. And I need to say again that withdraws, withdrawals and draws all mean the same thing. And expenses. All of these accounts have debit balances and they are increased with debits and they leave you in awe. Assets are increased with a debit because they make assets bigger and withdrawals and expenses get increased with debits because they make owner's equity smaller. It's easy to remember you are in awe and that those accounts all have debit balances and are increased with debits. That leaves the other three types of accounts, our liabilities, our capital, and our revenue. All of these accounts are increased with credits. All three of these accounts live on the right hand side of the equation, and so of course they're increased with credits. So, let's have a little action for this. Liquor. 
This is what you need when you're loaning debits and credits. Are the accounts that are increased with credits? When you debit an account, usually an ah. When you credit an account, it's a liquor situation. LCR. These are acronyms you can use to help you remember how to increase these accounts. If you want to increase assets, withdrawals, or expenses, debit them. And if you want to increase liabilities, capital, or revenue, credit them. Now the notion of a T account. We used one just a little bit in example number one above. We'll get to that in a minute. Thanks for joining me, and refer back to this when you finish this chapter. I think you'll find it helpful.